Hey everyone, this is Cody, and today on Astro Blender, we're going to have another episode of Back Focus 101. Today, specifically, I'm going to be looking at how to properly attach a camera to Newtonian telescopes that have M54 by 0.75 threads. Now, there's a couple good ways to do this, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is to use a simple 2 inch insert with T threads. So, this is a Explore Scientific 2 inch eyepiece adapter, but it does have T threads on the top. And this makes it really, really easy because with these T-threads on the top, all you have to do is just thread your camera into the T-threads and then drop it right into the focuser and tighten it down. So this is definitely the easiest way to do it, but there are some disadvantages to this method. Number one, notice as I put this in, I'm going to have to tighten down these thumb rings and that's going to push the T adapter up against this side wall here. So it's not going to be, your camera is not going to be perfectly centered on your secondary mirror. So you're going to see some vignetting and maybe some additional coma. So that is one major disadvantage is uh, you're going to have to take some pretty good flats to correct for that when you, when you tighten it down. Now there are some really good advantages to this method though. And that's why I have one of these as I do use this. So if you put in your camera and tighten it down and you don't like the way that you know your your image is looking you want to change the the rotation you can easily just unthread it turn your camera how you want it and rethread it down another big advantage that this method has is it allows you to simply attach two inch filters since the bottom is threaded for them. So if I take this Optolong L Enhance here, it just simply screws right in and the whole thing inserts and I can tighten things down. So this method is, is very, very simple for getting things how you want. You, know, you can rotate your camera, get filters on there. But the disadvantages being, well, number one, uh, you're going to see that vignetting like I discussed, but number two, this is definitely not a super secure method. So for example, when I start to image and my, my camera is hanging off the side here and as the, as the scope rotates throughout the night, it makes me a little nervous that the compression ring is going to hold it all in. So to keep that in mind when you're using this method, you may want to use, I mean, this is just me, but I used some duct tape the first night I used this because I was so nervous about it falling out and that worked pretty well. So this method is not as secure, and that is why I primarily don't use it, but it does have its advantages. Now my second method is a much more secure connection than method one, and that's primarily why I prefer it. And that's to use a filter drawer. And this is actually probably the best way to do astrophotography with a Newtonian. In fact, I prefer this over a filter wheel because it weighs very little, it's very minimalist. And when you have a Newtonian, the focuser sticks out to the side, and if you have a bunch of extra weight on here, it can really cause balancing issues. So a filter drawer to me is really ideal for Newtonian imaging. So this is a ZWO filter drawer. It has 48 millimeter female threads and 42 millimeter male threads. They also sell a 54 millimeter version. And the reason I didn't get that is I use this on my Schmidt Cassegrain as well. So I can use this on multiple telescopes. Uh, but if you only plan on using it on a 54 millimeter threaded Newtonian, you certainly can get a 54 millimeter version. So anyway, I just remove the two inch compression ring visual back. All right, there we go. So that reveals the M54 male threads. And then I got a blue fireball M54 female to M48 male adapter. So I'm just going to screw that into the focuser. And then I'm going to screw on the filter drawer on top of that. And then here's my filter slider. So this is a uh, Optolong L Extreme filter and I can just slip it right in and put my camera on top. 
So what are the advantages to using this method? Well, number one, as I mentioned, it's still very easy to use two inch filters. In fact, I think it's easier to use them with a filter slider than it is in method one where you actually have to screw them in. So still very easy to shoot filtered images. The other thing is the connection. You're not gonna see the vignetting that you get when you use the adapter because everything is nice and centered and that threaded connection just provides you the peace of mind that your camera is secure. So those, those benefits really make this my preferred method. The only real disadvantage to this method is once your camera is tightened down, your framing is pretty much set. So if you don't like how your image is framed, yeah, sure, you could unthread your camera a little bit, but notice that's going to introduce wobble into the focuser and you don't want that. So you want everything, make sure it's tightened down, not overly tightened, just, just tight. But yeah, your framing is pretty much set. Now I feel like that is a fair trade-off for the other advantages. So still method two is definitely my preferred method to connect a camera. Now up to this point, I've primarily discussed the different methods of attaching a camera to a Newtonian, but this is back focus 101. So I think it's time to discuss the back focus requirements on a Newtonian. Now, Newtonian telescopes are very unforgiving when it comes to back focus. You have a very narrow range where your camera can obtain focus. Now for CCD cameras, this isn't really a problem because most CCDs have very little back focus built into them. So for example, this ASI 294 MC Pro only has six and a half millimeters from the sensor to flange distance. And I even have the 11 millimeter ring attached and I still don't have a problem getting focus. So even the bigger sensors on the ZWO cameras that have the 17 and a half millimeters of back focus built in, it's pretty easy to obtain focus on a Newtonian. Where the problem comes in is the DSLR. DSLR cameras have 44 millimeters or 45 millimeters typically of back focus from the sensor to the flange. So if you put that up against your focus here, you're gonna see that takes up a lot of the focal distance just inside the body of the camera. And that makes focusing DSLRs on Newtonians pretty tough. So if you find that you don't have enough inward travel to focus your DSLR, well, there's two things you can do. Number one, you can get a lower profile focuser. Maybe it only comes out to here and maybe that's enough travel to get you focus. The second method is you can actually move your primary mirror forward. Now that's a modification that most people don't want to do, including myself. So this first image was done using my first method. This is NGC6992, which is the Eastern Veil Nebula Supernova Remnant. And for this to compensate for those vignetting issues, I took really good calibration frames. So flat, flat frames were a must, but what I really like about this image is when I first took it, my camera was not rotated the way I wanted, so I simply just rotated it and retightened it down and got the frame I wanted. So that is the real uh, advantage to method one, is being able to, to frame your shots how you want. You can see the back focus and the focus looks good, and overall I, I really like this image. This is definitely one of my favorite regions of the sky. I love the Veil Nebula, it's just absolutely beautiful. So let's go ahead and check out uh, method number two. Here's an image I took using my second method. This is M20, the Trifid Nebula. And what really amazes me about this image is it's only 15 minutes of data. My southern horizon is largely blocked by trees and other obstacles, so this is only five three-minute exposures. But you can still see I pulled out a lot of the nebulosity and fine details, so for only 15 minutes it's not too bad. But method two, I just really like this method a lot more because it is a much more secure connection, and I don't have to worry about vignetting as much because everything is nice and centered. Plus, if you use a filter drawer, it's just really easy to swap out filters. All right, everyone, well, that wraps up another episode of Back Focus 101. If you own a Newtonian reflector with a two-inch focuser and 54 millimeter threads, I hope you learned something about how to connect filters and cameras better, and also learned something about Newtonian back focus with this video. So stay tuned for the next episode of Back Focus 101. And as always, thanks so much for watching and clear skies.